The last thing we will do with Twitter data is frequency analysis. After this video, you should be able to create frequency distributions with collections counter, space padding in string formatting, and sort a list of tuples. As you would remember from the last lesson, the collections package in the standard library contains the counter class, which is handy for creating frequency distributions. It gets lists and counts how many times each item is repeated in a list. Its most common method returns the sorted counts. The final output works, but it's hard to read with all that syntax. We will create a nicely formatted table out of this output. In the notebook, we will use advanced string formatting operations in Python. So let's review them before we use them. In any string printing, if we format it with colon 20, it will pad the string to be 20 characters with spaces in the end. Caret 20, in the second line here, will format the string to be centered in the middle of 20 spaces. And greater than in the third line, we'll do the same thing while right aligning the string. PyFormat.io, the URL shown here, shows examples for many formatting options. I strongly recommend you to review it after this lesson. In our notebook, we will give you an example to nicely print frequencies uh, of the words or the word counts in tweets. We will then move on to finding the most popular tweets by extracting the number of retweets, the user, and the text for the tweet message. We will include a more advanced version of the pretty print for this purpose. Let's now switch to the notebook for our last live coding session. As we just reviewed, Python offers a counter class for the purpose of counting the number of items in each collection. So in this notebook, now we are going to use again the counter like we did in our uh, NLP example um, to count the frequencies of all um, the words in the tweets. So we are counting here. The counter object provides a convenient method, as you know, uh, that gives us the commonly used words. Here we have the four item in words, screen names, hashtags, all those uh, lists we created. And uh, we are iterating over the counter uh, to come up with the most common words for each of them. So we create a counter with the item, first the words, then screen names, then hashtags, and we are printing them. Um, for the most common 20 words. Let's display this. So we have definitely the RT MTV awards due in the first one in the words. Uh, the second was for screen names. These are some uh, common um, users or um, Twitter screen names. And uh, the MTV awards and other hashtags are also represented. You see also here MTV awards is displayed um, a few times in different um, character settings, right? There's the uppercase, lowercase combinations there. They're all listed separately because we didn't do a data cleaning to turn the data into all caps or all lowercases. So they'll definitely be counted separately. OK, we executed our example 7. Um, the C object is our counter. And we explored with it a little bit, right? Um, we could have received less, for example, first 10. If we re-ran this, um, um, we tried to print it out. It's like a dictionary. By slicing it with one of the words, uh, we can also check its output, for example. So the counter works fine. As you see, this is the most common, and we just printed. But the output is still hard to read. It is a list of tuples, so it has a lot of syntax like um, parentheses um, and the rectangular parentheses, um, square parentheses, codes, and things like that. There is actually a better way to do it in Python using advanced string formatting. And we'll use that now to display uh, this same output 
in a better format. We actually reviewed this just before we switched to our notebook. Uh, but again, we are using uh, the padding option in advanced string formatting. Uh, you can format a string to a specific length using a format string, like we do for here, um, the 20. It's going to be definitely printing 20. And here we have um, the uh, left alignment, and here we have uh, the right alignment. And this is centered. So let's go through this. We, we are creating a pretty print function. Um, we specify in this if we want to center align um, or right align or things like that that we are printing. Just as a reminder, pyformat.info is a great source. If you'd like to learn more about it, it was on your lecture slide. So after uh, this notebook, I really recommend that you go check those out. They are pretty useful. OK. Let's now use the string padding um, in this function and see what goes on in this function, right? We call this functionality actually pretty printing. Um, that's a technical word, pretty printing. Uh, we want to implement a function that pretty prints. It takes in, uh, let's say here, a list of tuples and a label and writes out a nicely formatted table of data objects or data structures. Um, in the first line, we create uh, the labels on top. The second line will give us 40 stars, exactly 40, padded nicely. And for each K and V in this list of tuples, they are the elements of the list of tuples we are going to receive, um, we will pad the K to be printed with 20, uh, to complete it to 20 characters by spaces behind it. And let's see, this is going to left align the word. So we can now use this pretty printer function um, for each label and data in word and words. So those are our K and V. And we are going through the data in our counter. Um, we are loading the data into a counter, and we are giving this counter and the labels to our pretty print function. Let's see what it outputs. We definitely have our word and count. This was our first one, the words one that was printed like this before, right? Um, in this case, we are um, formatting it to, for the word and how many times it happened nicely in a tabular form. Similarly, for screen names, it's a little bit easier to read. And hashtags, how many times a hashtag was mentioned in the set of tweets that we got back. So out of 58, um, the unique records, uh, we can make sense of these numbers a little bit, right? So next, we would like to find the most popular tweets by ordering them by the number of tweets. For those, We'd like to print their count, the author name, and the complete text. Uh, this can be achieved uh, by creating a list of tuples um, with those three elements and making sure that the retweet count is first uh, and then sort them with the Python sorted function. Next, we would like to find the most popular tweets by ordering them uh, by the number of retweets. Uh, and that's exactly what we are doing here. For um, those, we would like to print uh, their count, author name, and their complete text. Uh, this can be achieved by creating a list of tuples with those three elements, making sure the retweet count is first, uh, and then sort them uh, with the Python sorted function. So let's actually uh, create that list of retweets here in this code block. And uh, now we need to create a pretty print um, function to start printing them. And finally, we can print them in a tabular format. Um, 
Here the complication is due to the fact that we want to print the entire text of a tweet. And it's 140 characters. It would not fit in a single line. Um, in this code block or the cell, code cell here, uh, we have the pretty print tweets function. We need to split the text of a tweet into three lines of uh, 50 characters each to have some margin. Right? We have uh, 140 characters. Uh, moreover, we want to handle the case of short tweets that don't need all of the three lines with nested statements. Uh, please spend some time to go over this one. This is exactly what we are doing. We are uh, checking the length of the text of a tweet, and we are formatting it to be displayed in exactly uh, the right amount of columns and um, rows to display the whole tweet. And we will give now this function the input that we created, the retweets, because we are trying to find the most popular retweets. Uh, we'll sort those retweets, and we'll give the first five lines as a slice to pretty print uh, tweets. Um, and here we see that we have the count, screen name, and text. And uh, the tweets are displayed right after under the text in a few lines if they are longer. Uh, we could have, of course, changed this to be uh, 80 or something like that with the printing. And if we've done that, we see that uh, the stars go a little longer, uh, like we had. Uh, so it helps. We actually accidentally wrapped it down. Um, so you can play with this format and create a um, nice format for your own tweet outputs. Um, how do you, for example, print out the 10 more retweeted instead of um, 5, right? Let's actually turn this to be a little less, um, maybe 60. Um, instead of displaying the 5, we'll just make it 10, and it's going to give us a longer table. Right? It's going to give us the 10 instead of the next 5. Um, in order to get more familiar with the Twitter API, try to execute all of the notebook again, but this time changing the location of the local trends to something other than San Diego, maybe your own location, and change the hash hashtag in example 5 uh, into another topic you're interested in. Um, if it's a topic you're interested in, you'll likely find some interesting scenarios to analyze in that topic and uh, maybe use some of this data to do bag of words and identify uh, further topics or sentiments related to that topic, or do some other um, classification algorithms. Thank you. We, this was our last live coding session. In the next two weeks, um, we'll ask you actually to do a similar project for yourself. Download a data set and apply what you learned to those and create reports uh, or communication uh, presentations out of that. I hope you'll have fun with those.